Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing cruelty free vegan KFC chicken. That's physically disgusting. Anyway, and I'm having them with some waffles. Yeah, I'm going to be following avant garde vegan's um, recipe for it and adding a few tweaks of my own. So I'm going to link his recipe in the description below. Um, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see any other vegan recipe videos or just any videos you want to see in general. And yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so first what you're going to need is your dry ingredients. Um, we've got some white oil with gluten and chickpea flour that we're going to be using. Okay, so now I'm going to add in one cup of vital beef water, which is basically the star ingredient of this recipe. It makes the, um, it really gives us the meaty texture that we're looking for in the chicken. So now I'm going to be adding a quarter cup of um, chickpea flour, or I think it's also called ground flour. So that's it for the um, dry ingredients, and now I'm going to go on to make the wet ingredients. So now I'm going to be adding one cup of tofu, and yeah, I'm just going to rip this open and drain it. And now I'm just going to keep up the tofu to add to the blender. Um, so we're just keeping up the tofu to make it easier to blend. And tofu is a really high um, protein source and that's how a lot of vegans and vegetarians get their protein for those of you who might be wondering. And adding the tofu, you're going to add the onion salt, some dried tarragon, and now you want to add some dried sage. I couldn't find dry. I couldn't find any dry sage in the supermarket, so I just got some fresh ones. Hopefully, you know, doesn't make a difference. Yeah, like one thing about me when it comes to cooking, I don't always follow the recipe to the T. I like to just mess around with the ingredients because it's more fun that way and it feels less. Robotic. Add some garlic powder. I'm not really strict with myself when it comes to the measurements, but I'm going to put the link to the um, recipe down below and you can check out the exact measurements for the spices. And also one teaspoon of sea salt. So yeah, that's it for the wet ingredients and now I'm just gonna blend it up. Nope. Actually that's not, I still need some miso paste. <laughs> yeah, so here we have the miso paste. You just need one teaspoon of this as well. Soy milk, and I think that is definitely the last ingredient that we need for the wet ingredients, and then we're gonna blend it. Half a cup of soy milk. That's it. We're gonna blend it now. Okay, now so we're just gonna blend up the wet ingredients to make them have a smooth consistency, and then we're gonna pour it into the dry ingredients and mix them together. The wet ingredients all blended up and actually had to um, add a bit more milk because the consistency was still a bit thick. So that's just some, um, you just have to use your own discretion when you're um, blending it to see how it is. If it's a bit too thick then you can add more milk and if it's a bit too um, runny then you could add some more tofu to it to make it thicker. But yeah, that's what we saw right there. So now I've just added the wet ingredients onto the dry one. You want to try using a spatula or a spoon to try and make sure you get everything out of it. Just use that to mix, fold them in basically. Um, I think Gaz used very exact measurements for his recipe, but obviously I'm not as experienced as he is, so I'm just eyeballing as much as I can, or with the ones I can get away with. I just want to get all the dry 
dry ingredients mixed them with the wet. So you want to just keep mixing it for now so when you get a sort of doughy consistency and just mixing as much of the flour as you can. Try to make sure you get all of it. But yeah, just make sure you take your time mixing this in so you get the right consistency. And the next step is very crucial because that's what's gonna make or break the texture that you get at the end. So you want to really be patient with it. So yeah, I think I've pretty much gotten as much as I can from this. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't look that good right now because they're still gonna need it and yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so you just want to clean off your surface um, for where you're gonna have to go. No, you don't want any salmonella. Um, you can manage for salmonella. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, this is the most important part of the recipe, like I said before. So you want to take your time with it. And I've made Satan a couple of times and luckily I haven't had any problems with the texture when I'm done. Because if you don't do it properly, you could get a kind of spongy um, Satan and you don't really want that with what we're trying to achieve. I just keep doing this for about three to five minutes. Basically what this does is helps get rid of all the air pockets that might be between the dough. Okay, so yeah, so what punch it does is basically just, like I said, get rid of the air pockets and it's a good way of letting out any frustration that you might have from what you need. Of someone that you don't like. If you're done kneading, you let it rest for about 10 minutes and in the meantime, just prepare your broth, which I'm going to show you now. So, in the broth, we are going to have some um, vegetable stock, one liter of water, some rosemary and thyme twigs, and some onions as well. So, right now, I'm just chopping up the onions and then I'm going to add them in. To the broth. Into the broth. <laughs> we don't usually sit down when I'm cooking, but can handle problems. And yeah, so for the stock, I'm gonna be using this vegetable stock, and I don't, we don't have any liquid vegetable stock here, so I just have to make my own. And if you have any, you could just use that instead. But yeah. And I prefer this because I get to kind of control how spicy it is. And like I said, I prefer kind of any amount touch to certain parts of the recipes. I've also got this spice or like a different kind of stock right here. It's called Benny flavored chicken stock. And my mom got it for me from Nigeria, so I'm not sure where you can buy it maybe you might be able to find it where you're from or where you're living and i'm just gonna add it because i feel like it might give it a bit more chickeny flavor it's not as healthy as this one like this is all natural but yeah something that you might make once every couple months so you should be making it that often anyway so you could get away with like using some unhealthy ingredients So now you just want to um, cut the dough into four pieces after you've let it rest for about 10 minutes. Just going to knead it a bit to make sure 
there are no extra, there are no airport pets that might still be um, present. And then we're gonna place it into the broth and let it boil for about half an hour. Okay, so now I'm just going to place the um, chicken pieces into the broth for half an hour and then it's meant to like double or triple in size and, and give it the texture that we're looking for. And while we're doing that, we're going to prepare the waffle batter and also start getting ready, getting our coating station ready. A few moments later. Yes, yeah, so right here we have our coating station. We have some plain flour, some chickpea flour with some water. That's gonna kind of be our um, egg replacement. And here we have we have some panko bread crumbs with some flour as well. And I'm going to be adding some spices into that. So in the spice mix, we have some allspice, some black pepper, some sea salt, oregano, paprika, and cayenne pepper. And now we're just going to add that to the um, flour with the pack of breadcrumbs and mix it in. I put the chicken pieces in the fridge to cool down for a bit. Um, it's recommended that you leave it overnight for you to get the best texture because it cools down and it kind of firms up and comes together. But I don't have that much time to wait that long for it so I just left it for about 30 minutes and now I'm going to just tear them up or rip them apart and coat them and, oof, coat them and then put them in the fryer okay so first you want to place the chicken piece in some flour and coat it in some chickpea butter and then in the one in the breadcrumb and spice mix. Okay so I messed up the first time but you should try using one hand for the flour and one hand for the butter because then all your hand just gets really sticky and it's, it makes it more difficult to coat it properly. Okay, yeah, so the main event, and since I'm like seven foot two, I have to bend down for the camera.
Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching that video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, make sure to let me know if you tried it out and I'll definitely love to see some pictures from you guys as well. And yeah, I've actually made this before and they came out amazing so I hope they're just as good this time. Yeah. Thoughts? Do you approve? Really good. Now, obviously, as a almost daily chicken eater, you can tell it's not chicken, but it's it's pretty close. Honest review. Ah, I'm not putting that in. Honest review. I'm not putting that in. Fuck you. What do you really think about it? I've stopped recording. What, what do you think? Yeah. It's fucking delicious. Yeah. It's the best chicken I've had. You, you want to like stop eating actual chicken right now, don't you? I officially turned vegan. Yeah. Morning. Damn. If only my viewers could see this. We could hit my crib up if you like. Or I hit it in the whip and travel light. Mm, yeah, yeah. We can even cruise up in a ride. You can be my bunny, I'm your Clyde. Mm.